Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm Peggy Sue Skipper, and I am delighted to be sitting today with a man who is literally making history and finding ancient history. You're going to love this show. I'm here with Dr. Sam Osmanagic, and he has discovered the first set of pyramids on the continent, on the European continent. So welcome. Thank you, Peggy. That's exciting stuff. It is. As a matter of fact, we live in very exciting times. The 21st century with all archaeological discoveries that are coming, will show us that almost everything they taught us in schools about the ancient history was wrong. So not only are you discovering history, you're going to change history. Exactly right. I believe it. And imagine what? The key for the rewriting the history are the pyramids. What they've been teaching us was so wrong. They tell us that the pyramids are built only in Egypt and Mexico wrong. They are built everywhere, on every continent. Then they are telling us that the pyramids in Egypt are tombs for the pharaohs. Wrong. In the biggest and oldest pyramids, there are no bones of kings, no mummies, no hieroglyphic writings, no royal furniture. We really don't know who and when, how and why built those pyramids. The second in Mexico, they are saying the pyramids are built to sacrifice the enemies. Again, wrong. We don't know why the Mayan pyramids were built, but the most important is think that the pyramids are built in South America, Peru, Bolivia, in Central America, Honduras, Guatemala, Salvador, Belize, Mexico, in North America, here on the U.S. soil, in Africa, Sudan, Egypt, Canary Islands, Sicily, Mauritius, in Asia, Cambodia, China, 250 pyramids, Indonesia, on European soil, Greece, Italy, Bosnia, Spain, France. So this is a worldwide phenomenon. Unfortunately, these are not things that they teach us in schools, but the time will come, and they will be teaching us about those phenomena. I believe you. And now let's back up, and I just want to let our viewers know that, first of all, you have a PhD in Mayan studies, so you know what you're talking about when you talk about the Mayans. You've traveled the globe uh, studying these sites. You're not doing this from a book, right? In fact, you've written. How many books have you written? About ten books, all about the ancient civilizations. Wherever you go, the pyramids are there. You go 13,000 feet above the sea level in Bolivia. The pyramids are there next to the Lake Titicaca. You go to Peru, to Peruvian deserts, South, north, in Cavaccia area, 34 of them, Tucume, 250 of them. You go to jungles in Central America, everywhere, the pyramids, Honduras, Guatemala, Mexico. People are trying to clean them, to reconstruct them. Only about 10% places where the Mayans build the pyramids are known. The rest of them are still buried in woods. You go to Cahokia State Park in southwestern Illinois, here in the States. 200 pyramids and tumulus. They call them in mounds. Illinois? Here in the United wow. States. They call them mounds, but they underestimate them. They are not simple mounds. They are built structures. You can see the layers of clay and sand and rock. These are plant structures. You know, when I discovered the Bosnian pyramids, I had so much trouble because archaeologists, historians, they were all against. And then I heard the stories, well, if it was in the States, they would make such a huge tourist attraction, like in Egypt. Instead, we have something so important here in Cahokia State Park. We have the biggest pyramid, which is called Monk's Mound, which, as far as the surface, is larger than the Great Pyramid of Egypt. In 14 acres. Does anyone know about it? That's not part of the common knowledge. Why do people ignore such a huge structures? And you know, they call them Cahokia Mounds. Cahokia is the name for the Indian tribe from 300 years ago. But the pyramids were built much, much before that. The history has to be rewritten. People need to know and learn about these things because they were made by very advanced cultures. We have to admit that there were people in the distant past who knew the astronomy, the math, geometry, who knew about the energy phenomenon and electromagnetic fields much more than we thought, even better than we do. 
That's why the magic of archaeology is coming again in the, on the planetary surface. And then we will learn about the ancient past and see what we can apply in our present and how to solve the problems of our future. Mm -hmm. Now, the Mayans, they've been around for about 4,000 years. And uh, they always lived on the same territory, Belize, Honduras, Guatemala, Salvador, and Mexico. And uh, for 4,000 years, they live in the balance with the nature. And look what we did. In the last 150 years, we went from 1 billion people to 7 billion you know, people. So basically what we do, we wiped out 50% of plants and animals. Who gives us the right to do that? It's uncontrollable. Why? Because we lost that harmony between us and nature. We lost the balance between physical and spiritual. There is a lot to learn from the ancient people. And I think it's interesting because I've heard you speak before, so I've learned a lot about pyramids. <laughs> but, and I want to make one thing very clear. When you talk about pyramids all over the world, I don't think a lot of people know that there are certain qualities that make a pyramid a pyramid. And one of them is the fact that they face a certain direction. So explain that, would you? You know, so far they teach us that uh, the pyramids are local phenomena built by certain kingdoms. But if you travel the globe, you research and investigate that phenomenon. You can see five common elements for all pyramidal complexes, whether it be China or Egypt or Mexico or Peru. The first element is, of course, the geometry, the architecture. You have to have the shape of the pyramid. Triangular faces, one, two, three, four. You can see in all the corners. The second element is the orientation. For some reason, most of the pyramids are oriented exactly towards the cardinal points, east, west, north, and south. The Great Pyramid of Egypt, perfectly oriented towards the cosmic north. The same thing with the Chinese, Guatemalan, and Peruvian pyramids. Number three, you have to have construction material. In the case of Peru, you have adobe bricks. In the case of Guatemalan pyramids, you have volcanic stone. In the case of Egyptian pyramids, limestone and granite. Number four is the inner passageways and chambers within the pyramids. And number five, underground tunnels, the network of underground passageways and chambers. Those five elements are common for the pyramids in central Chinese province of Shanxi, for Giza or Saqqara pyramids in Egypt, for Teotihuacan or Peruvian or Bosnian pyramids. So these five elements are very important and they are telling us that people in the past, they had the same concept of the pyramid. Before and the fax machine or email, exactly, right? Yeah. And of the orientation. You know, Cahokia pyramids here on U.S. soil, all of them, are, and that's 200 objects in the shape of the pyramid, all of them are oriented towards the cosmic north, which is our northern star, except for the one, the biggest one. That one is oriented uh, towards the magnetic north. This is not the basic knowledge of astronomy. This is an advanced knowledge of astronomy. How come those people had that knowledge? They are not primitive Indians. They are advanced people. So. These things are telling us that people in the past communicated from different continents. What they teach us in school is again wrong. They are telling us that only when the superior European man came to, you know, from Europe to American continent, the communication started wrong. The communication was around for thousands and thousands of years. Okay. So I think the, f the reason that this... Um stays suppressed in a way, and that's really what it is, it's kind of suppressed. Or maybe we just don't care, maybe people are just busy living their lives and what difference does it make what happened back then? But it really does make a difference because it changes our whole history and our lineage in a way. It's changing the perspective, the view of the ancient history, but at the same time it requires from us to change our scientific paradigm. What we teach our younger generation says that the human history is the linear progress. You started as a caveman level, and then you are progressing, 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 and today you are at the top as far as the technological progress, as far as the intelligence, as far as the beauty, things like that. Wrong. 
the way we live our lives as a humanity is we live in the cycluses for 8,000 years from Sumerian and Babylon, Akkad, Assyria, ancient Egypt, ancient India. That's just the last cyclus of human growth. Before that one, there was another one. Before that one, another one. But they were interrupted by the global catastrophes. Like so the Ice Age? Exactly, the end of the last Ice Age. A huge global catastrophe. Earthquakes, volcano eruptions, the biblical floods. So, and then humanity had to start again because 95% of humans were wiped out. So these are the things they don't teach us in school, but they should. They should change the history. So I would say it's not just the, ig the ignorant, but there is, I would say, the idea from the elite to suppress that knowledge. So we need to change our history book, we need to change our scientific paradigm. Everything that we think that we are inventing, it has been already there, sometimes in the distant past, but it's been forgotten for so long. Well, I think you hit it earlier. Um, you know, we have, we have developed our outer technology so much, the people we're talking about had more developed inner technology, more spiritually connected to the planet. And now you're convinced that the pyramids that you discovered in Bosnia, you discovered them in 2005, right? They were built before the last ice age. You see, discovery of the pyramids in Bosnia is very significant. So far, people thought there were no pyramids on European continent. So with this discovery, we have at least six very important elements that's going to change the history forever. Number one, the first pyramids in Europe. Number two, these pyramids are the biggest, the largest on the planet. When we compare the biggest Bosnian pyramid, which are named the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, its height is 700 feet. The Great Pyramid of Egypt, 450 feet. I bet Egypt That's loves that, right? <laughs> Number three, when you start uncovering the pyramids from the soil uh, and vegetation, we are finding a huge blocks, rectangular blocks, different shapes. We've analyzed them. These are man-made concrete blocks of exceptional quality, much harder than what we have today, with much less water absorption that we have today, meaning that somebody had you know, better technology than we do. So that was number three. So, uh, the first European, the biggest on the planet, the best quality concrete. When we, when we analyze the soil, the soil is 12,000 years old. It means that, according to the mainstream science, Egyptians are 4,500, Chinese, Peruvian, Mexican, 2,000, so Bosnian pyramids are the oldest on the planet. Number five, the orientation of the northern side of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is so perfect that the error is zero degrees, zero minutes, and twelve seconds. So it's the best orientation on the planet. And number six, under the Bosnian Pyramid, is the most extensive network of underground tunnels. Those six elements will change our understanding of European and the world history forever. Well, I know I was blessed to go see those pyramids about six weeks ago, um, or the site. And I, even though I had been hearing about it and listening to you talk about it, I was not really prepared for how extensive the site is. I mean, this is huge. I mean, it's a whole valley. And the tunnel systems, what you've excavated so far, I mean, to me, look pretty sophisticated as far as how they've they they created them, whoever created them. 